What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode. Today we are picking up the cylinder head for the Speed 6 to get ready to assemble the engine finally. And I'm super pumped and super excited. Today is going to be a treat. I'm going to be taking you into my guy's machine shop and talking over some things with him to kind of give you guys some knowledge on, you know, head work and machining and stuff like that to kind of give you guys an edge ahead in case you are looking to get machine work done, building a motor, what to look for, stuff like that, and so on and so forth. Save you guys some time and hassle uh, when you go to do the same thing that I'm doing. So definitely stay tuned. We're about to go in there. This is gonna be more of like an uncut thing. I'm gonna just let the camera roll. I'm gonna ask him some questions, kind of go over some stuff and let him talk. The guy is super knowledgeable and has been building race engines for 30 plus years and really knows what he's doing. So uh, definitely stay tuned and listen in. And uh, hopefully you guys pick up a couple little tips and tricks and know-hows from this video. So we'll see you in a second. Dear Lord. I don't know whose that is or what that is, but it looks like they're ready to party. Holy hell. What's up, buddy? Busy day? Uh, every day is busy. Always busy. That's for sure. <laughs> oh my goodness. There it is. There it is, man. All finished up. That be. surface looks awesome already. Man, that surface looks great. All new valves, new guides. Be good to go. That's awesome. So for everybody watching this head uh came off the original motor that was in the car and brought it here not knowing really what was wrong with it and uh paul went through kind of everything step by step uh took everything apart and kind of just gave me a parts list right off the bat um and he found that some of the valves in the guides that were in there were kind of wonky and suggested that they be replaced so i ended up hitting patrick up like i showed you guys before for valves and it turns out there was a little issue with them, and you were kind of explaining last time what it was, but it was uh, the yeah. actual backside of the valve itself, right, was out of, yeah, like, out around. They're, they're basically bent. Yeah, right. And not on the stem, it was up towards the actual head of the valve, and uh, that was on, what, what tool were you using for that? Uh, just a V-block and an indicator to, to check the out of it out around if you will yeah so they were off by like a few thousand so he recommended new valves and i said at this point you know what just go ahead and do it because we already had new guides going in we have new valve seals and might as well just get new valves while we're at it just so we're 100 percent good to go and you know with his expertise and years in doing this that's what his recommendation was so i was definitely going to listen to him um we do have a new set of cams well a new u set from patrick uh as well that checked out all right because my other ones were kind of wore out um but this thing's been thoroughly cleaned decked all ready to go assembled all the valve lash is already set and ready to go so this thing's literally just going to bolt down and be ready to rock so we're definitely pumped on it um so just for knowledge base on stuff like this when people are going to get their their stuff machined whether it be block head anything like that you know what are some things really that you want to look for as far as being prepared um to go to the machine shop or what you should what questions you should be asking the machinist um when that time comes well basically you know if there's any parts that you can see offhand that are bad like when when you're when you took your your head off your motor you have to pull the cams out so there's a good time then to check your cams so that when you get there you can already know that those are good as far as like knowing if valves are good or guys are good there's really nothing you can do until it actually gets to the machine shop and they pull it apart and start checking everything I mean, so for you know a novice or something like that like me being myself i've you know i've never taken but, apart a head mm -hmm. and you know i'll admit that and that's fine but I left it to a professional to take it apart. Yeah. Um, but the reason I'm showing you guys this is because if you guys are looking to build a motor and you are expecting some kind of, um, or a, a what to expect, if you will, when you go to a machine shop, um, these are the things that you may encounter, even though you have a working head, doesn't mean it's a perfect 
head. Correct. Um, and when you go to machine the surface and, you know, they take it apart and stuff like that, there's going to be a lot of things you can't see. So, you know, the valve guides, you know, I didn't know they could be yeah. sloppy. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, you wouldn't know until you physically took the springs off and wiggled the valve and seen that the guides were as sloppy as they were. I mean, they were very bad. Um, and the same same thing with the valves. I mean, they could look perfectly good, like they're seating and sealing, but until you actually put them in a V-block and spin them, or in a grinder or something, and spin them, you'll never you would never know that the, the average person would never know. You could do it. You could even do a vacuum test on the head, and it might still come up good because of where the valve is bent and how it's bent. So until you physically pull stuff apart and actually start measuring and and, and checking everything. You, a novice would never know you know nobody would know i mean i wouldn't know if you brought me to head and threw it on a bench and said is it any good i would say i don't know until i take it apart it looks good <laughs> so you were mentioning last time i was here checking it out um with the valves on the back side when you were using a lapping compound you said that you you really couldn't add any more compound or you, the way you were going to grind it it just wouldn't make sense to reuse them because of the yeah, material they were, they, were, they were so far off that i would literally have to grind the valves were bent 15 thousandths roughly so I would have to grind a minimum of 15 just to get the valve back to round and what would happen is your margin which is your your thin area here between the face of the valve and your and where your valve seats will be so thin that the valve would basically be junk right and there's just you once a valve bends a certain amount it, it has it has moved and you just don't want to try to grind that back into place you just you just replace it it's just how it is if it's if it's off a couple thousands you can grind that out but usually anything more than a couple thousands you just replace the valve because it is physically bent right and then you said it's kind of like a, a waterfall trickle effect on as far as when you get back up to like valve lash and stuff like that you're going to have to take off like the tip of the stem and stuff too because yeah once once you once you machine the seats which i did here i machined all the seats the valves i didn't grind because they were brand new but when you put them in there even this head with everything new i had no valve lash it was zero so basically what you have to do is you have to mock the head up, which I did like four times. You put the cams in and, and you check your lash between your, your puck your, and your, your lobe and measure this head zero. So you have to start off with grinding. I think the minimum was like eight thousands on the exhaust or something like that. I can't remember. And you start off with that and you start grinding until you get that. Then you put the head together because it's going to change once you put the spring on. Put the cams back in, put the pucks back in, and re recheck it again. And you might find that you're tight or loose. If you're tight, again, you'll have to grind some off the tip of the valve, which means pull that cylinder out, pull it apart, grind some off, put it back together. If it was, if you had too much clearance, um, you would have to grind the face of the valve to 45 in order to get it to come up into the head to give you a tighter lash. So this worked out good. I didn't have to grind the faces. I just tipped them, what they call tipping the valve. And just grind a tip until we had the proper uh lash on it and that was it now with the existing buckets that we had with zero lash like that when you were talking about that was it a lot easier to set with that or you well, know if, do you still you, have to do the mix and match game if you had a had an assortment of buckets and or a mass amount you could or you wanted to buy them and wait you could mic what you have they all have a number on the inside in millimeters and you could get the ones you need but in this case seeing as everything was new it was just tip the valves 10, 15 thousandths at the most. There's still plenty of room, and you just do that, and it's, it's cheaper. That way you don't have to. You can use your existing buckets, and you just, you know, working with what you have here. So yeah, there's a couple of different ways of doing it. Yeah, and guys, this is, like, awesome information. I sat here in awe the first time I came here, and honestly, I wish I would have brought the camera then because we were kind of having the same conversation, um, but I really wanted to bring, bring the, the camera back to kind of, film this for you guys because it's this is really important information especially if you're trying to you know either learn about your engine or you know try to diy stuff if you have the tools to do it or just wanting to know what your what is going to be getting done or what to expect when it's getting done and you know one thing i asked too because i wasn't sure was you know after the valve lash is set am i able to pull the cams off to put the head studs through and all that stuff and he said yes once they're once they're set you know they're set and you can just lay the cams back on torque them down you know as you as you would and be set to go now i see there's already like assembly lube and stuff on there now when you're when you're putting a when you're putting a head on a fresh short block you know a fresh head on a short block what are some things that you might want to do um when it when torquing everything down stuff like that and getting ready do you want to pour oil i've seen methods where people pour oil across the cams 
you know no, um, I, I i generally try not to be that sloppy so what i do is after you put your head on you do all your torque in and all that and now you're ready to put your cams back in i just put a, enough assembly lube on it on and everything that's moving so that it's just not pouring all over everything i mean because it's just a mess so you only need it on here until it fires up and once it fires up you got your normal oil pressure going through it and you're good to go and, and if you use the proper assembly lube it won't run off like if you use oil it, it'll run and it and it just by pulls the time up and you, makes a mess yeah by the time you actually get to start it all the oil is going to be gone where this stuff here has been sitting on here for a couple days and it hasn't left where i put it so right it's kind of sticky it kind of clings to everything and that'll be there's until the, the, the oil from the motor pushes it out that's great and and like i said guys these are uh used cams that i got from uh patrick at uh dirty water racing but uh my other ones it was it was a little worn on the on the yeah. lobes itself right it was, or was, worn, it was a... worn on the journals where it goes into the head it was oh it okay was, it was pretty bad the, the journals or the lobes were all right but the journals were would that be caused by oil starvation mm -hmm. could yeah. that also be caused by the motor getting washed down with fuel yes okay. Any, anything that wipes you know fuel anything like that 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 takes yeah. the place of the oil as a lubricant that'll cause that problem so guys like i was telling you my motor was perfect and i had that fuel issue it washed down literally top to bottom on this car and that's what in turn wiped it out i mean you guys saw the bearings when i pulled the bottom end apart they practically welded themselves together it was rough and i thought the head was okay which i mean structurally yes it's great and it didn't have any like major warping or anything at all so it was just some hard parts that needed to be replaced that are normal wear and tear items eventually anyway um i believe this head was you know put together with what it had in it before and maybe just updated some seals or something but um you know now is the time to go through and make everything right because the bottom end is brand new and with a build like this and the power that we're going for we just don't want to have any room for error and just want all the specs to be tight so that's why i brought it to paul paul's been like i said he's been doing this for 30 plus years and uh generally he works on much bigger stuff <laughs> a lot of big v8s and you know all this stuff but all of them are our race engines so you know his tight his his specs are normally super tight and you know he is very meticulous when it comes down to uh clearances and all that stuff so and, and there's also times like on this particular motor that from the factory they have a pressing plug in there there's pressing plug there and there's two pressing plugs in the back of the motor and basically you drill and tap them slide hammer them out so that you can get in there and be able to clean the oil galleries and then once you do that you can either put an aluminum plug back in there and i chose to use eighth inch pipes here oh wow i didn't even and know that put a three set screw here to seal it back up so oh, so wow. in the future if you ever it takes the head back apart and needs to clean it it makes debris it that out much of easier it, you just pop all the plugs out and you can wash all the oil galleries out instead of you know it being packed in one end see see you know there was dirt in here from the old cams being spun and stuff like that that would all be stuck in the oil galleries because they're bottomed so the oil goes in and it and it, and it like It'll find a spot to stay in and eventually it'll loosen back up the dirt and it'll go through your motor and wreck your bearing. So this head was completely taken apart, clean parts washed, the brush ran through all the oil galleries and then fresh oil galleries with sealer put back on them. That's awesome. I didn't even know that and that he did that. So that's awesome. And that's a really good thing to know because like I said, like, or like he just said, if I ever have to have the head cleaned again or whatever, you know, it's as easy as uh, pulling those out because it's threaded now and be good to go. But man, I, I'm really appreciative of you and all your work. And I will definitely be bringing future engines here for sure because, you know, I just, I just, in all of the knowledge base itself and you know how meticulous he is based on you know what we've talked about and just seeing the products he produces and the people that you know have nothing but great things to say about the engines that he's built so um definitely a future for us bringing uh other motors here not only the mazda engines but um the v8 stuff too as well so and whatever else we decide to get into but uh i really wanted to just bring you guys in for that because this is like one of those things that I post for you guys a lot and you guys love these little like tech tips and know-hows and um, just kind of helping the community out as far as what you need to know. And this is just one of those instances. Now we're completely ready to go and be able to assemble the motor on the Speed 6. So uh, it is going to be a very fast uh, 
ramp in here as far as getting the car back together and uh we're gonna be bringing you guys a ton of content on this but uh just huge thanks to paul and uh if you guys uh have any questions or anything like that uh hit me up in the comments below or you guys can find us on facebook and instagram and you guys can chat with us there but until next time guys we will see you later peace